Hi everyone, welcome to our first ever podcast. I'm here today with... Natalie Doherty. Hi! Bryce Fletch. Liz. Hi, I'm Peyton Kevill. And I'm Owen Leahy, and we're here today to talk to you guys about Stranded and what creating an entire web series was like in the middle of a pandemic. (laughs) Great time. Yeah. It's hard. <laughs> oh my god, it's so Roll the credits. Are we getting right into that? Done. Curtain. Yeah. I have actually cuz I didn't really see the postmortem and so I would love to like go into like hear a little bit about. And I say postmortem, I mean the va that's on our YouTube channel you can watch right now. Um It's literally uploading <laughs> as we speak. I think it's going to be uploaded in 3 minutes. So, so when you're done listening to this podcast, go watch the postmortem. And then, once you're done listening to this podcast and you're done watching the postmortem, then go back and watch Stranded and see if you can notice all the things we talk about. To clarify for anyone who doesn't know what we mean when we say postmortem, that's a kind of a behind the scenes. Peyton, Owen, and one of our editors, I think Allison, uh, the three of them show, showed on stream what they do behind the scenes in the editor and when filming to make Stranded the web series you all know it to be. You all know and love. Stranded. This, it totally isn't just like us going on for an hour to try and get our uh, watch hours up. <laughs> Absolutely, Absolutely not. That not. would be ridiculous. Yeah. That would, that would be preposterous. That? Every moment of life is a chance for But uh, before we like get into like the show and everything, does everyone want to maybe mention what they do in the show and how you got into it a little bit? Maybe that would be a good place to start. Sure. Yeah, so uh, we want to start with with I'll Natalie go. again. Peyton, why don't I you won't. go first? Oh, Natalie can go. Natalie, <laughs> can go first. Natalie can go first. <laughs> that one's so smooth. We're we're, we're great at making it. podcasts. Um, so I'm Natalie. I voice Daisy, and how I got into the project was me and Owen know each other from high school, and he was like, "I'm gonna make this web series, be a part of it," and I said, "Okay," and then. Throughout the process, I just kept gathering more roles. So I'm now the co-community manager, and I also design all of our graphics and promotional material. And uh, produces and, and edits produces this And produces and edits this podcast. <laughs> wow. She's amazing. She I actually yeah. think Everybody the conversation with out. Natalie went less like, oh, hey, can you do me this favor and voice this character? That sounds really nice of me. I think the actual conversation is we were at a campfire and uh, what I said was, hey, Natalie, I'm writing a character for you that you need to voice. I, I, would we like to go pay, Peyton, Peyton now? Now, now Peyton, Peyton can go. Yeah, Am you can go Am I going now? now? Okay. So, so I got into the show because uh, Owen said, hey, do you want to make a web series? And we made a web series. So um, I basically, I, I do a little bit of editing and uh, I voice Martin. A little bit of editing. You... Okay. Basically make the entire show. You also shoot the entire show. I I also yeah, do the so camera. So if you like any of the but... camera work that's done, that's ninety nine percent Peyton. I might have like an idea at one point, but it's all Peyton. It's he he's the magic. It's like. So I think I had you two join first, and then I think the next person to join after that was Bryce. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah, because. Because you were talking to me about about like Liz uh, at, before she joined the project, um, but yeah, my name is Bryce. I'm an actor. Uh, I voice the character Corinth, uh, a character you see very much behind the scenes and then a big reveal uh, at some point. Uh, I feel like if, if at this point you'll have watched Stranded if you're listening to the podcast. Yeah. Um, and I joined up. I, I, I go to college with Owen, and no one was like, hey. I got a thing. I got an idea. I've seen you do these kind of roles. I think you might be fun with this. And I was like, sure, let's do it. And then he did have fun with it. <laughs> yes. I yes. hope. I also, I also do, uh, I think I'm the other co-community. You are yes. the, you're the manager. other co-community manager. You, <laughs> yeah. handle, you <laughs> handle things more on the uh, Twitch side. Yeah. I do yeah. a lot of the, the behind the scenes for Twitch. And then I do a lot of, I guess I kind of just do some support for Natalie behind the scenes with like, occasionally helping out with art or graphics or whenever she needs a hand as the pile slowly grows yeah (laughs) Yeah. and then the last person to join our project liz formerly known as lost claws hey guys it's liz aka lost claws but i'm on a hiatus right now what's going on um so yeah basically i got an email i think late july i think that's when i started sending out emails 
Um, and it was from this email I didn't recognize. And I get a lot of business emails that aren't legit. And so like, <laughs> and this I'm one was. This <laughs> no, but because, like, I, um, it, a lot of them are, like, apps that are, you know, like, multi-level Ew, marketing girl boss. schemes or, like, beauty products that I would never, like, advertise for or just, like, stuff I just, you know, like, wouldn't, in good conscience, like, promote and this came in and the email was like hey like we're um like my name is owen and i'm doing the show stranded here's what we think it is and he sent me the script i think i sent you a sample of the first three no, you, episodes first two yeah. right you sent me the fir- yeah, two, yeah. Two, first two episodes and i looked at it and <laughs> um i didn't respond at first because i was way too shy and I was like, I can't, like, there's no way, I can't even, like, say, because usually I just don't respond to, like, emails I, like, don't respond, like, would say no to, so I was like, oh, God, I can't, no. He follows up, like, a day later, and I was like, we'll pay you a hundred dollars! That's not what happened at <laughs> all, that's actually... No, no, yes, no, 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 no. Yeah. It's our I'm entire gonna... budget. <laughs> you responded... Oh, you said it You responded first. to my no, first you... email, the first email I sent, because in my email, I was like, I'll pay you a hundred dollars, which, by the way, <laughs> I've now learned... Is not a lot of money <laughs> to give someone for acting services, but you also need to remember we actually had no funding. It was going to be yeah, completely out of pocket. Allowance. So I was like, ma- maybe they could buy like uh, a dinner or a two, and ball. it'll be worth it. Like uh, was kind of my thinking, because everyone else was volunteering for the project. But I was reaching out to different, uh, I'd say people with social media platforms on TikTok. Uh, Because I thought it would be a good way to kind of get that kind of audience involved with Stranded. Uh, Because we needed a way to have distribution for our video series. We needed a way to bring people in besides This is a Destiny Machinima. So I reached out to a couple of people, and Liz was one of the ones who responded, but she responded with, I wouldn't take your money. Aw, I would. I know you would, but you weren't offered it, so. That was a fight we had in the email. You're like, please, and I went, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're like, <laughs> take the money. Um, but I remember I didn't respond at first, and there had to be a follow-up. I know that for sure. Thank you. Something, something that we should just clarify here. Liz wasn't just given the job. There was some there form of oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. process. Liz did <laughs> yeah, have to, like, So read. Liz had to do a test reading like everyone else has to do a test reading. So Liz, Liz, Liz very much earned, earned the role. Well, yeah, Liz earned the role for sure, and she was the one I wanted for the role because she had uh, theater experience. But sometimes what I will do if I want to get people involved uh, in the show is I will I'll invite them to read. I will invite them to do a test reading, and then I'll make my decision based off of that. But I'm never like, just join the show because you're, you have a platform. Uh, we've actually had instances where people with platforms want to join the show, but I, they, 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 they're not a right fit might be a good descriptor. Is They're not mm-hmm. a right fit. And I think from the first test reading to now, Liz has always been an amazing fit. She right away got along with our friend group and everyone, because this uh, Stranded is made mostly by like this group of friends. So, and, then and then Liz. Liz was the only <laughs> person who was the American <laughs> outside of my friend group. Some of the people well, didn't know each other. They all knew each other through yeah, oh, a vague connection in, through like, me. Different groups that you're a part of, you kind of brought them together to create the show. Because like, I didn't know Natalie before. You're my this. Avengers. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I want to be Spider-Man before Bryce calls dibs. <laughs> oh, literally, I'm literally wow. wearing red and blue. There is a poster behind wow, me. Wow, wow. I can pull wow. both of my suits up from blue. under my bed right now. Guys, hey guys, please don't fight. Please don't fight. Please don't fight. <laughs> and this is it. And this this is, is 90% <laughs> of the recording process. Uh, um, yeah. But I, yeah, I remember when I first came into the read through, I was so nervous. Can I ask so I what like, made you change your mind, maybe, if you want to talk about that? Would you change your mind saying yes? Yeah. Because there was lo- there was a week where I didn't hear from you. <laughs> yeah, there was. Um, <laughs> it I when I was really self conscious about like my talent, um, I was like, oh, that's just gonna ruin it. Like it's not gonna be like a good thing. Um, 
and I was nervous to just like be a part of something um because there's always a risk involved with that um and I at the end of the day I was like well just go for it you know what I mean like it'll be a good experience maybe you'll make a friend or two <laughs> now it's like 10 um like and you know maybe like this could be just like awesome for you and like what you do and like it turned out to be everything and so much more than that um and I'm glad I went with my gut of you know just go for it because I think it was the first read through where I was like okay we're gonna see how this goes you know um where I really discovered that it was this was good this was it like this was gonna be good um I was nervous because like I like I grew up have a theater background it's really hit or miss sometimes like with your cast and your crew um and everyone immediately was just so welcoming and so nice and so sweet and you know I was like oh, okay this will be this will be good this will be fun and also when Owen like dms the discord and is like if you don't record, I have the rights to burn down your house. I'm like, haha, yeah. That was be... aimed at, uh, I think we should clarify, that was aimed at our lead actor, Billy, who is the voice of West, who was recording his audio, and I think we lost about 20 to 40 minutes of work because he forgot to press record. This is the sound, you, you, you all hear right now, this is the sound of his brand new microphone we bought for him to Ooh. make sure that that never happens again. It will again. never happen again. We, have, we <laughs> got Billy a brand new mic. It's going to be okay, um, guys. Yeah, but it's like stuff like that, and that's just kind of like camaraderie that they have where like, there were no questions asked about me, you know what I mean? Like, oh, like, oh, it's like someone from TikTok or anything like that. It was just like, I was Liz, and like that meant a lot to me to come in and just be Liz. Well, I mean, I, yeah, uh, and I that, that, that I think is part of the reason, because you and I had emailed a bit before the test reading, and I think do, I think you and I talked once, like, over the phone about, because we were doing your test reading, and uh, you were like, hey, I'm still a little nervous about doing this, and I was like, they're very, they're a chill group of people. <laughs> they're a very chill <laughs> group of people. Please, we're not. Well, and then they weren't know. for six months. <laughs> I I would I went into the I went into the first reading just under the impression that everyone who was showing up was a friend of Owen's in some capacity. Mm -hmm. So because I, I I knew Billy, I knew Owen, and I knew uh, Dante who voices, voices uh, Carl, and I just assumed everyone else was like, oh, Owen knows these from like the other schools he's gone to or his friend groups or like his online. So I just when you're like, oh yeah, I'm from America, I was like, oh, Owen's probably like games with Liz. So I didn't even know that you were like on TikTok until I think we were already finishing recording the lines. I was like, oh, this is, oh, okay. <laughs> oh, cool. Yeah. Surprise. You know now. <laughs> Listen, TikTok was the reason that you got the email in the first place, but you stayed for so much more. True. And fax yeah. no printer. Mm hmm. <laughs> <laughs> nice uh, yeah I guess I should talk about the series now <laughs> so uh, like the, we're talking about creating a web show in the middle of a pandemic which is not an easy thing to do like I think we said no. at the beginning the original plan was to make a bunch of short films this summer but obviously that fell through and so I was talking to Peyton because Peyton, for those of you who don't know, is a film school graduate. So we we were talking about what we could do, and we threw around the idea of a machinima because we thought it was such a good way to film a story without having to be in person. And uh, the and I had like a small idea for a Destiny machinima uh, from like six years ago. So I was like, we could just make that, and then we did. It's, it's, you said it originated from that scene you wanted with like the slow dance. I wanted right? that slow dance scene so bad. <laughs> one day, one day, I'll get the slow dance. We'll, we'll get there one Wait, day. Wait, actually, stranded live, baby. Question: I'm not sure if you've you've said this before, but was your original idea when making Stranded? Did you come up with raid recruitment first? Because that released a few months before everything went down so with Stranded. We or was talked Stranded about the original idea. We st Stranded was the original idea. We always had Stranded. Uh, but Peyton and I were talking, we're like, how much work is it going to go into making a full series? How much 
are we going to have to do? Can we even do this? Can we get a big question for the longest time while filming both Stranded and Raid Recruitment was, can we even make like a successful Destiny Machinima? Because the game <laughs> itself does not <laughs> lean... <laughs> It's not the most so pliable I'm medium. Playing Peyton's English, right? and maybe, yeah, I'll let Peyton, I'll let Peyton talk about it because he knows more than me. But for, I think, Peyton, there was a solid two months where every single day we were like, we can just switch to Halo. We can just switch to Halo. <laughs> <laughs> can, can I, can I yeah, swear, you can swear on, on this? this. Yeah. Yeah, you can swear. Destiny fucking sucks. <laughs> um, it, like, just do slash creative so... mode. Just slash creative mode. <laughs> not to isolate any destiny uh yeah no, affiliates we love we destiny. love destiny it's yeah, such hey, an B B integral Bungie. part of our community and we love the people who create it v Bungie. include some film options <laughs> please like, okay the, the please. beautiful thing about halo is that it has a theater mode so it has a built-in camera you can do all these crazy cool things like you can wise. get multiple like people in Destiny, into a match. Yeah, exactly. You're not limited to three people <laughs> in a play space. In Destiny, it's uh, you don't have a camera. You have to constantly swap between two weapons and pray it doesn't end up in frame. Uh, you have to, if you want a group shot, you have to mask it because you can't have more than three people in a shot. It's just like so much work goes into like a single shot. It's so watch insane. the postmortem. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a lot of the it's a lot of the things that you would assume yeah, would be like do. easy or just like you wouldn't have to think about. That's where a lot of the effort goes behind setting up shots, ensuring that like you can get the characters in frame, stuff that you don't really worry about. It, not even in like film, but in other animated mediums. Well, yeah, and Bryce, to go off of your thing about talking about raid recruitment versus stranded. So raid recruitment was filmed. Raid recruitment, fun fact, most of the things we record are like I write or I do. Raid recruitment was Peyton, Peyton's idea because he wanted oh, to sure. do something. It was my idea. But I like, wrote it, but it was your it. idea. Uh, so we wanted to see what we could do in Destiny. So we filmed that and we're like, one of the problems we run into with filming in Destiny is that, and I won't talk about this too much because, once again, we talk about a lot of this in the postmortem. Uh, but is that you can only you have three characters on an account, but we need an account for filming. So, for a character to be in the same scene as a character, they needed to be on the same laptop. If that makes any sense. How? Okay, so you have three characters, right? And so yes. let's say, and so Stranded and Raid Recruitment both have teams of six characters. So we had three on right. one, three on the other. The problem is we were using one laptop for recording and the other for body acting. So no matter what, we would always have like someone not logged in. Mm, so then let's okay. say like Clover and West are two completely different laptops accounts. So when we have, so originally if we were, we couldn't have a scene with them together unless we want to cut back and forth between singles and never show like a double of them. Interesting. And that was our strategy for raid recruitment was just shot yeah. reverse shot. There was never, there was not a single two shot. There was one group shot and that entire short. And it took forever. That, that was what we referred to as the nightmare shot. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the reason why we call it the nightmare <laughs> shot was because it was, we took clips from two different, like, computers. So, like, we weren't able to line things up correctly. I had to line everything up, like, in post to make sure, like, everything cut together like it should. And it was just it was so bad. It was so, terrible. Well, well, you two are... You two double up with a lot of things, like, oh, and you're, you write, you direct, you voice act. And then Peyton, you voice act, you cinematography, you edit... And you two are also body acting. Something to clarify for people is that the rest of us voice actors, we're not doing any of the body acting. We, we're just given our lines. We sit down with Owen in a call. We record them. So all the body acting is really just you two, Peyton and Owen. But 
correct me if I'm wrong, did you bring in two other people to also help with body acting, specialist and powercraft? Yes. So uh, those people will sometimes help with the body acting. And this has actually changed with the Beyond Light update that Destiny got. But because uh, now the load times are faster. <laughs> but like, once yeah. again, a lot of this is covered in the postmortem. So I'm going to move away from this after this conversation so we can talk about more of stranded community things. But to <laughs> the lighting... <laughs> is dynamic it's dynamic lighting on the moon so <laughs> what peyton and i did is eventually we got like a second laptop and everything so then it became easier to film uh characters on different accounts because we just had a laptop for each account but then it became hard to film with characters on the same account because we would have to if we were doing masking we would have to set up the shot film body act in accordance to that shot then switch characters, load in, and then body act on the other side. And then Peyton would cut it together and make it look like nothing happened. But because of the dynamic lighting, if you took too long loading in, the lighting would be completely different, and so the shot would become unusable. And with these other body actors who've helped out, they would have to log into these same accounts too? No, so we looked for body actors, and by the way, we will be putting out a post for season two looking for more body actors to help out. But... Yay. Yay, more people in the server. Um, <laughs> but they w so we would put out a call because there are personal like, like gaming accounts. So we would put mm -hmm. out a call for people with armor cuz destiny armor is incredibly difficult to get and some of the yeah, armor you can't reget once you've gotten it. Mm -hmm. So or if you've delete if you got it but deleted it, you can't reget it until you like naturally find that armor again. And so we were looking for people who had armor. So yeah, Powercraft and Specialist Feature helped a lot with that. Hey. Yay! We love it, we love it. That's cool. Because I remember people were like, oh my god, Liz, you're a hunter. And I was like, huh? I'm a what? <laughs> like, a, a what? I was like, what? I was like, it's huh? the moon. No. <laughs> no, I'm a doctor. I'm just, yeah, we don't yeah, really talk like about it. Destiny a whole lot in our Destiny machinima, which we've been criticized for, but that's neither here nor there. We, we haven't been criticized, but we've definitely got a lot of questions in the community server about, yeah, does the Destiny yeah. lore tie into this? Like, how are things connected? And it's like, ah, they're not. The answer is maybe. Oh. Well, here's the thing. I never want to definitive. I never want to definitively say that it's not a part of Destiny or whatever. The story that are definitely Destiny related. Let's put it like that, I think, for now. And we don't need to go into it any further. This is a spoiler-free podcast, actually. This is a, uh, this is a spoiler-free podcast. We will talk about season two a little bit near the end, but no spoilers. Well, that's one of the things that I think is actually really, I I I I see as a benefit towards the Stranded series is that it's not like mm -hmm. it doesn't lean into Destiny lore to tell its story. That it it can exist on its own. I think that brings in people who maybe won't have connections to Destiny, but can enjoy the story for what it is. Well, that's exactly when Peyton and I were talking about making the show. We were like, the problem with making, and maybe not a problem, because there are a lot of Destiny 2 machinimas that do really well for stories based in Destiny. And actually, Raid Recruitment is based in Destiny. Uh, but for us, we wanted to tell this broad story that, like you said, you don't necessarily have to have played or seen or even know about destiny to enjoy the story can stand on its own mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah it's just really relatable right. like i think we've all been like lost on the moon everyone's and, like, been lost in the moon that's it just yeah. Uh, yeah yeah i mean shoot for the moon if you oh. miss you'll land amongst the stars but you'll freeze in the vacuum of space first <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> the life I see leaving your eyes as you say Natalie. that. Natalie. <laughs> okay. Thank you so anyway, much for joining us. Over. It was a good try. <laughs> oh my god. Thank you, thank you for joining us. <laughs> so you want us to talk more about community stuff? Yeah, so how... Well, I kind of want to talk into like the episodes starting to release because kind of what happened was 
we did the test reading. Everyone met Liz. We did. We were. I recorded everyone's lines. We lost Liz's <laughs> audio like twenty nine <laughs> times. I think Peyton was ready to kill me. I think no, uh, when I get a text from Owen at like nine by the third PM, time. He goes, Liz, emergency now. Call. <laughs> just like one word text of like. <laughs> It was, I, my heart stopped. And that was, like, the first time, and then the second time, and then the third time. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, Peyton. The, uh, Sorry. It's all good. <laughs> the uh, the first time I started cutting the audio together for, like, episode one, <laughs> I went into uh, all of Liz's files, and I was like, I heard just three, <laughs> two, one. I was like, huh, that's weird. Uh, pretty sure that's in, like, episode nine. Uh, let me check all the other files. And it was the exact same. <laughs> it was the exact oh, same no. countdown. <laughs> for all of the episodes <laughs> so i was like owen <laughs> always check your render time stamps folks <laughs> so that happened so we lost all of liz's files we recorded liz's files the files were some of them were unusable because of audio issues so we had to record again and i think we had to record one more time after that I forget the reason, but it happened. I think there was one, one of them was just like, I want to do this differently. I did want to do it differently, yeah. Uh, but so we recorded everyone's audios. Uh, and again, Bryce, you and I didn't really talk about the show much leading up to the release. Like, you and I, like, we recorded your lines. I told you your character and everything. Mm-hmm. But in terms of Bryce being involved in the project, he started coming in more, like, as the series was released. Yeah, I think, uh, well, when we were yeah. recording lines, you and I sat down, and what was really what was really exciting is just with who, the na- who my character is, so much of him is set up to be important for future seasons, not necessarily within the first season. So we had a lot of meetings discussing about what's coming next. So, like, I know things people don't know. Uh, which was really that cool, was but yeah, once we we recorded my lines because I'm not really a, like the the episodes in season one really really focus on the crew and their confrontations with Carl and with the moon mm-hmm. itself. Uh, so until episodes started dropping, I was just kind of chilling, watching, listening, and then when episodes started to drop, then I really got more involved with. How are we releasing things? How are we planning for future projects? Uh, how are we getting things like the community server up and up and running? It's what was cool is that it it never felt like it was just come in and out and we don't want you anymore. Like I know past projects have done once you do your work as an actor you disappear. This was really cool because it's super collaborative and gave more opportunities to do other things. Yeah, I think that was a really important thing for us when we were like creating. We're like we mind you we're all like college kids just trying to make a web series together in the middle of a pandemic so it people just started originally it was just me and peyton like doing basically everything uh to from distribution to ideas to writing and edit it was all me and peyton and then the episode starting started releasing And we started getting so much support from the community. And I think we all, because sometimes we talk as friends and not as uh, coworkers. Uh, We started talking and we were like, we can, we just want to start doing more. So everyone started volunteering their time and we got a lot of cool, (laughs) we started doing a lot of cool things. Like we never. Like a podcast. Like a podcast. Like uh, (laughs) we, we never planned on twitch streaming we never planned on doing on having a community discord we never planned on doing a post-mortem we didn't even know if we were going to do a season two that's why this season is written where it can just end and that could be it it was depending on the community support so at the time we didn't even know if we were doing season two but the overwhelming support from the crew and the community has really solidified that we're going to be making content for a while I yeah think. when uh when that trailer came out and it just exploded i was like i was really taken aback i was like wow people are like people are excited to watch this well you and i were talking and we said the point of this project is for us to have a creative outlet during the pandemic which i think is super important 
especially for artists right now in the pandemic who are struggling to find work or participate in work and they're feeling I've talked to a lot of people in the community who are feeling de- really down as artists because it feels like we're limited in what we can do and that's what we want this podcast series to kind of be about is how people are adapting and how people are continuing in the industry but as people like Peyton's fresh out of film school I'm in theater school uh, we just wanted something where we could maybe work on our craft and we expected it to get a couple hundred views maybe if we were we i think we talked about like if this gets a couple hundred views we will consider this a success uh and now i think we have a median average of like a thousand views an episode which is it's insane it is very insane and then the support we got for the subathon Twitch stream and everything. Everything has just kind of been snowballing into this amazing experience. Uh, does anyone want to talk about the show itself? I have the information. Uh, th- you, I, Season 2 is happening. I, I've seen the season script two for episode is 1. Happening. Season 2 was, confirmed. Season 2 confirmed. Season 2 is being written. Was Listen. I the only one in school while this was being produced? Because you guys had the semester off. No, you too, uh, Bryce, right? Because you were online. Uh, I well, I was in a weird situation. I, I was. I mean, I mean, again, like I wasn't super involved during the actual production process, just because the nature of my character within the first season. I had started to do some online schoolwork during the summer, and then. I've yeah, my education's really complicated. But then, the fall semester was pushed back. So I was like, you know what, what I was planning on doing during the summer, I'll just do during the fall instead, because it was like additional outside of theater school work. So I, I, but yeah, Liz, I think you were the only one full time while recording and producing and creating. No, Natalie was as well. No, uh, Natalie and Mitchell. Myself, Mitchell, and I think uh, Allison, who was editing, is also involved. Right, 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 right. Uh, I think Hannah was full time, but Mia wasn't. No, Mia's in a, Mia goes to our program, so Mia was... Yeah, so up. it was pushed For back. those of you who don't know, uh, a lot of people uh, involved in the Stranded production go to uh, college-level theater school, and our per- our school got canceled <laughs> for the semester, essentially. So, uh, because of COVID. Have you heard about it? Have you it? heard of COVID? Is that... Yeah. We're in a ponder replay well, right now. Na- what? Question for Natalie pandemic uh but uh yeah so we <laughs> just started this semester and bryce is gonna ask natalie a question now yeah well it's Hi. so for for myself for owen for actually this is for liz too but this is so we clarified like like billy dante peyton owen myself we've all come from programs or are in programs that are very acting focused or very film creation focused itself for liz and, and natalie and i guess you two can also speak for other members of the of the, of the crew who aren't here have have your career pro- maybe related to yeah how are, how are your programs <laughs> how are your programs related to to what we're doing or if they're not related how is your own life experience so my program is called new media and so it's a lot of communication and design but also business and advertising and audio work and video work and growing rabbits that glow in the dark it's very broad so <laughs> Um, I found that Stranded has really kind of helped me focus on different things that I want to do. I want to get into podcasts. I want to get into voice acting. I want to get into editing and designing and advertising. So it's been really helpful for me. I also get uh, volunteer hours for it, which is fantastic. So I can graduate. Who's giving you those? You. (laughs) (laughs) Podcast (laughs) listeners, you cannot see Natalie's face right now, but it was the most intense stare I've seen from Natalie in a very long time. (laughs) Leahy, if you go back on this, I'm going to kill you. (laughs) It's fine. Don't worry. (laughs) Thank you. I I got you. For me. Everyone here is paid in volunteer hours. Um, Except for Liz. Except for Liz, who is paid in He's paid in friendship. (laughs) He's paid in companionship. Um, Paid in work experience. How about that? <laughs> um, exposure. Exposure. That. <laughs> yeah, Maybe. I think... Was Peyton... I don't, know, I, I, I don't know if you want to talk about this, Liz, but I think uh, on your public like Twitter profile eventually, like at one point, you were like, hey, does anyone need like an intern social media manager? Yeah. And I was like, well, if you're wondering... I wanted to jokingly ask you to run this stranded shit, 
But uh, I was like, I have actually no experience I can give her. So. Yeah. It's, yeah, so for me, I'm a political science major, and I minor in East Asian studies. And so it's like, the one thing I can think of is like that one line I say, it's like, when nations try to colonize the moon. Like, all right, we can talk about, like, colonization of, like, you know, stuff like that. and But, like, that, that's not really in the series. And so I, it doesn't really, I mean, for, as far as I know right now, there's nothing really for me that I can, like, really apply my expertise of international comparative politics <laughs> to. Um, uh, I think that's cool, though. It's cool. And mm-hmm. I, I love my degree. And I love how I work on it and the work I do. Um, but for my career path, like... I've kind of seen how I want to work more in, like, social media, like, production behind the scenes as well. Kind of leaning towards, like, a Natalie thing, but definitely not as, like, skilled or in-depth. Um, like, copywriting, kind of things like that. Um, well, I think, that, I think that's cool, because even though this is just, like, mm-hmm. a, a fun bunch of friends creating something for the internet thing, I think I think, I think that's just a great example that, like, you, you don't need to have specific education or experience creating things like, like writing scripts or acting or... or, or doing any of this to get started you can be involved with it with your yeah i think that's cool that you don't like your education your post-secondary isn't all about acting and stuff but you're still just as able and and skilled at at doing this too yeah i mean for me like the last formal thing i did was my sophomore year of college um and like all the characters i played throughout my career have either been like a mom or like someone who's like supposed to be like the like the like out there character like the like that sort of thing so to come and like come in this was a challenge and be the badass yeah <laughs> I know, you're kind of like the mom to martin and clover <laughs> My children. <laughs> actually i think it's My more like a big boys. sister type relationship is how peyton and i were talking about it yeah when uh-huh. i was pitching around the idea it and but like for me like i think it super intimidated me hearing everyone like getting Cause like I have friends who are in theater school. Like I grew up like as a theater kid. Like I have friends who go to Tisch. I have friends who go to Michigan, and so you know, like I know what that takes. I know who gets in there, and so hearing everyone like coming from these backgrounds, I was like, oh my god, gave me a lot of hope. But also I was like, yeah, oh, we're totally no. at the Tisch level. <laughs> no, but like, like you know, like that's but, me. Like, they no, call but, me Owen Tish. <laughs> but, like, it is, like, you guys are, like, at the top of your game, like, actually trying to actively work on your craft, you know? Like, you are getting an education to be the best that you can be at what you love to do. And, you know, that's something that I didn't do. And I decided to go a different route and to mm-hmm. kind of hop back into it and watch you guys. And also just have discussions with you guys about, like, you know, like, how things work and, like, you know, just line reading and just back into like acting in general has been it's been an amazing learning experience because like you know i've been talking about regimes and you know governments and you know, movements and everything for like what three plus years now and now i'm coming back in and being like okay now liz can you not go down at the end of the line can you try going up and like try like you know like it's um it's helped stretch me back into something that i haven't done and i I think that's, that's cool. the note I give people the most when we're recording. <laughs> is, uh, hey, can you not drop at the end of your line? It's Which, by the way, people do all the time in, like, normal talking <laughs> world. Oh, yeah. It just Natural. sounds so weird in a film or acting setting. And I didn't know that, you know what I mean? It's, like, coming, like, into, like... And Owen's a fantastic director, and I think we can all agree. He won't say that he is um, because he's too humble mm-hmm. for it, but Owen is a fantastic director. And he knows exactly what he wants. He's not mean about it. He knows exactly what he wants, and he'll push you to get it. And you know, coming into that and having him guide you, not holding your hand, but gui- guiding you through that process mm-hmm. of you just getting there with that character and letting you explore is something that I missed, um, and something that I really enjoyed watching and learning from all of you as well. Not just Owen, because I'm just Owen thing as director, but all of you like speaking to you about like your career paths and your education. That actually means so much to me because this is my first time. This is actually my first project I've ever written and directed, and so it's obviously super scary. To, yeah, uh, congrats. It's gone it's well. Such, it's such a weird thing to be like, okay, I've now written this thing, and now I'm hearing you, the people, read the thing, and then we create the thing. Right. And it's, it's it kind of made me want to do more of it, so we'll see. But yeah, this if was this my section, first time directing, and it was super scary. If this section of the podcast interests you folks, stay tuned for the Theater Creation Podcast yeah. coming soon. <laughs> Peyton, I have a question for you. 
Um, so this is, this is something I thought of. When you read the script and you got our audio, was there, like, were there choices or were there lines that you were surprised of, like, how we read them or how they were delivered that you were like, oh, or, like, liked? You know, you know what I mean? Like, oh, I didn't expect that, but, like, ooh, you know what I mean? Yeah, th there were a couple, yeah. And, like, I was like, oh, that they took that in a really interesting direction. They're like, a, a, lot, of, uh, a lot of the lines with uh, Natalie, like, yelling as <laughs> Daisy <laughs> were really great. I was like... That sounded like that's way funnier than I thought it would be. My but, um, poor roommates. My poor roommates. <laughs> your your line readings crack me up. Like Natalie. Natalie. <laughs> Natalie is so going talented. through those I was files. telling Natalie uh, during our stream today. Uh, I I've just started at the time of this uh, podcast. I've just started writing episode two. Ooh. Uh, tease it. Tease it. <laughs> tease it. Just want to say, <laughs> seen episode one. Banger guys are gonna love it <laughs> <laughs> peyton, peyton has read the first draft of episode one but uh i was writing episode two the other day and i think i revised natalie's lines about seven times <laughs> and i'm only like three pages in but i revised her lines like seven times because i was like oh daisy would say this and this would be funny <laughs> da no daisy could say it like this and i kept flipping around who was saying what i was like well what if daisy said something like this what if i flipped the scene and she's actually the person who asked the question and uh, writing for Daisy is so fun. I just love Daisy as a character so much because, like, when it was proposed to me, and by proposed I mean voluntold, <laughs> uh, it was, <laughs> this character is written for you, we're going to do it this way. I was like, cool, awesome. And then the way that she grew and actually stretched me as an actress was really cool. Mm. Like, now I know Russian, <laughs> and I think that's nifty. <laughs> <laughs> So, if Peyton's read episode one of season two, is, is has, has Peyton kind of been your 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 soundboard, who the, the person you bounce your ideas off of, Owen, when you're writing and creating the show? Peyton, it seems very collaborative from start to finish. Peyton, I would say, is my partner. Yeah, we're everything. like he. Spoil it, Peyton. Tell us what's going on. Okay, so episode no, episode no, one, no, West no. fucking bites it, dude. It's crazy. No. <laughs> 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 It opens with West being executed. No. <laughs> you ever seen Game of Thrones? <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it absolutely is collaborative, but, like, there kind of hits a point where, like, okay, Owen's off writing, I'm off, like, doing my thing editing, and then we just kind of kind of sit in our own kind of areas, and then we kind of reconvene yeah. and then uh, discuss. It's two different worlds, but those worlds collide into something beautiful. Come on. Red and blue make purple. <laughs> Peyton, another question for you is because you also perform in the show. Whenever you're editing yourself, <laughs> how? <laughs> how does that go? How, do, how is that? Because I cannot feel? imagine just like hearing myself over and over. Like, and I used to do that for videos. So I usually just turn the sound off eventually. Yeah. Um, yeah. But how does? Because also, I'm just thinking of like one particular line, Peyton. I think you know the one. I'm I know exactly about. what you're talking about. <laughs> um, so yeah. one. I absolutely hate the sound of my voice. So when I have to mm. look through all of my takes and pick the best takes of a voice I hate, it's like, okay, yeah. what, what's the best of the worst here? Let's just kind of... Mm. But uh, How do you think I feel? There's a reason why Clover's the only one with an accent. <laughs> it's because I can't stand hearing my voice. But <laughs> I, th I, genu I genuinely think if I had used my regular voice for Clover, I... I, I don't think I could have watched the well, show because <laughs> no. er, er, like er, super early on into editing, you were like, I don't, I don't like how Clover sounds, and then we just we redid all of Clover's lines. Really, yeah. you're, missi you're missing a key part of that, which is, uh, yeah. So originally, Clover was recorded with not exactly my voice, but a voice very, very similar to mine, mm -hmm. and uh, I was like, God, I hate Clover's voice. What's wrong with it? And Peyton was like rubbing his temples. Just being like, it's your voice. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to say plot that, twist on that one. That was definitely a, a, a I don't, I don't want to call it a learning curve, but Corin's <laughs> how he sounds in the show is like the seventh version of his voice that I, I had. It's, I remember your table read voice for Corin. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. Well, Everyone talks about it. I don't remember it. My my gut instinct when coming forward with this voice was, is I just, I kept trying to find reasons to make Corinth sound as far separated from my own voice as I could. And like through a lot of very polite 
and 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 coaxing from Owen. He's like, no, no, a little more like a little more like that without outright being like Bryce, just talk normally. <laughs> <laughs> Owen, <laughs> Owen coaxed Owen coaxed me past many many different versions of Corin's to the point that we now have Corin's voice and then all the cyber cyborg audio filters layered on top. Mm-hmm. Wait, Bryce, your voice doesn't just sound Wait, like what? that. You can't make that. <laughs> you can't just, I can't just like... What? I feel so light. Because it's you, you. You put it into like a, a really strong head voice. Natalie, have fun editing that audio. Uh, like you, Pardon? you, you push that airflow up into like your head voice. From like if I'm hearing things correctly, and like I can't. That just seems. Corinth kind of talks more like this. Yeah, it's very very like I don't want to breathy, say breathy uh, but I know what you mean by head voice. Yeah. 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 And so, like, I like, want... remember, I was listening to you back, and I was like, that's tricky. That, like, that mm-hmm. control that you have to have to, like, keep it there and, like, not peak and, like, not, like, immediately I mean, flip. Don't give me too many, too much credit. I've recorded, like, I'm giving you every total, single so bit of credit. Season two will Dude. be the real Christ, do you want to give us a little, do you want to give us a little tease of that voice you use? <laughs> oh, let's see if I even remember it. Um, <laughs> you better. <laughs> we are that's a very professional podcast. I can go back and listen to it, but, um... I guess Corinth kind of talks like this. Is this a fair? Is this a fair? Is yeah, this close with enough? the we, we kind of deepen months, it. Throw some audio we, we filter, add, deepen it a we bit. Deepen it, and then we add a uh, voice filter to it. Oh, oh my god! I hate every here. bit of. I love it. I hate scary. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the thing: our listeners can't see the change in Bryce's body when he goes he, like, into Corinth like mode. He starts <laughs> squinting at us. I, I'm, I'm being a theater actor just by like that's where a lot of my own experience comes from, and so much of when I, I love, I love voices, but I'm a very physical actor, mm-hmm. so I really f- try to physicalize it regardless of if it's. <laughs> It's it's a real issue for film. I really need to learn how to relax Ooh. for film a bit more. Um, uh, but that's Bryce, one thing that's nice about voiceover. It's something mm. you need. Yeah. So Bryce is a very physical actor. Where I would say a lot of us are physical actors. We need to move, and especially voice actors. If you watch like yeah. recordings oh, yeah. of people in booths like doing voice acting, there's a lot of physical work that goes into it. Watching Robin Williams as the genie blows my mind. <laughs> so when Peyton and I were recording on. <laughs> Peyton, I don't think we've ever talked about this. <laughs> oh, oh my god. Um, <laughs> no. Peyton's I don't laughing think Peyton already. and I have ever talked about this. But uh, when we were recording audio, we were like, hey, we need to find a way to move and still record. Because if we were wearing the headsets while we were recording, there would be a bunch of mic shuffle and stuff. Right. And so I MacGyvered out of a guitar stand, a guitar, and a mic. I created like <laughs> a microphone pole. <laughs> It, it, it was a guitar like wearing a, a headset, stand. pretty much. <laughs> yeah. And so people would sit on, like, the edge of the bed in my spare room and be like, talk over this. And it was, it was oh so We even used it recently. Okay, we used that's it new for, media. Uh, that's that's there, new media that's right, there. We, uh, right there. We have a photo of it, right, Owen? Oh, uh, we have to. See. I have a, I okay, have a photo uh, somewhere. I'll find it. Stranded really takes <laughs> off, you know, 10 years down the line. <laughs> we'll, years, we'll remember the, the guitar <laughs> wearing the headset. Listen, the guitar wearing the headset helped. I don't care what you say. <laughs> I want the guitar wearing a headset to have a cameo in season two. Also, I just want to, I feel like, Peyton, I want to give you a shout out for your performance and Owen, your performances as well, because like, they're so good. And I love hearing you guys speak and act and perform and do all the things. I'm going to give you a mini round of applause right here. Why, why me and Peyton? Because what? I guess because we were just talking about you and your, like, your audio and everything like that when I was asking Peyton about oh, his yeah. lines and stuff like that. And I think, you know... Everyone, I, does, everyone does a fantastic yeah, like, job. Our, yeah. really our voice like, cast is stacked. Like, it's but like the chemistry stacked between you two yeah. is really strong. Like, <laughs> well, like 90% ones. of uh, 90% of Clover and Martin audios are based on conversation space. Yeah, well, like Owen is the snake I, thing? and I hate that. No, the snake thing was Owen in my basement saying, "I uh, snakes have bones." <laughs> <laughs> like yet he, he said that to my face. He was mean mugging it, no emotion. He was like, "Snakes, they have." Bones, yeah? Like, yeah, they got bones. Are you oh, kidding me? Oh my god. Amazing. I'm a writer, All the dumb not stuff. a not a scientist. Well All uh, the dumb stuff that Benson says, Owen said. <laughs> yeah, for anyone who's like wants to be a writer, something to keep in mind is so many of the jokes and so many of the moments that like help create character within the show. They're like things that have happened or are similar to things that have happened in real life. Benson tag 
That's a that's a like Owen Owen and Peyton have lived there. Ben, <laughs> Peyton, talk oh, about yeah. Benson ben tag. Tag is real. Benson tag is based off of my trauma. <laughs> no. Owen. So, like, Owen yeah, was straight up your own life my elementary school bully. <gasps> <laughs> oh, oh no. And we're still best we're, friends. Yay! So, somehow we flipped it around, but uh. <laughs> well, here's the thing. I think it was like Stockholm syndrome almost, because like, here's the thing. You exaggerate it a little. <laughs> like, oh no, yeah. you don't well, get to pull that part. No, yeah, yes, 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 yes. Because we would do like bullying aspects. This sounds like bullying so like, to me. It's like lactose intolerant bullying. Just we, a little we, bit. We, would, we took we out the would, lactose like, of the bullying. We would we would do bullying activities uh, to Peyton, but on top of that, we would also like hang out and like play on the playground. Ever like it wasn't like. Hey, where's your lunch money? Oh, and like, I, uh, is that what you think bullies I, say? <laughs> hey, where's your lunch yeah. money? <laughs> yeah, I uh, Karate Kid taught me. So. I, 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 I I had this toy car. I, I had this toy car oh, in like no. the second oh, grade. Oh no! And, if uh, Owen loves you, know there there was this giant mud puddle yep. in the in the playground. Okay. You know, Owen just threw that motherfucker right in the puddle of mud. <gasps> No! And, and you know what? Owen! For whatever reason, we couldn't find it. <laughs> we couldn't get it no, out. I... And then, like, last day of school, we find it, and it's all torn up and broken. And did Owen oh, apologize? For the I viewers. can't remember, probably. To clarify for the viewers, these two have moved past no! their history and are very, they are yes. very good friends and they do love each oh, other no, very much this actually happened this last week. <laughs> <Yeah. Christ>. <laughs> <laughs> this happened while Owen was back in town for Christmas. It's... You got a, you got a car for Christmas and I just threw it. And now we're all buds and friends. But like... I would, Peyton, I would say that was like 10% of the L relationship. Listen, Owen. But here's the thing, it was just so bad that that's very loud what gets so remembered. Like, Owen, yeah. you're my best friend, and I love you, buddy, but, you know, huh? fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> that's fair. I deserve that. So, as oh. I've said before... Season two. Confirmed? Uh, <laughs> season two has officially begun production. <gasps> I've started writing it. It's happening. Uh, what can I say about it? It's going to be longer. It's it's gonna be longer. Longer. Uh, this started as something we created during the pandemic, and because it was something we created in the pandemic, Peyton and I were talking about it. And again, we never thought we would get the community response we did, and so we were like, we want something short and manageable. And so it started with six episodes. It then went into eight, and then we I had to split an episode into two episodes because it was getting too long. Uh, so we landed on nine. We're going to have almost double that amount of episodes in season two. Uh, we're Whoa, going to... ten? Right now we are... <laughs> Thank Big you. math numbers. Art students? Natalie is an art student. <laughs> uh, right now our my current goal, and it might be get reduced, but I'm working on 16 episodes for season two. Hey. I think Ooh. we can say. Bryce, you can't just get away with your... Uh, one-line villains anymore. You got some uh -oh. actual dialogue you gotta, oh, I gotta I gotta put meat on the bones now. Gotta, gotta Let's inflect. go, baby! Otherwise, yeah. I'm uh, calling... Otherwise, I'm calling Cursed Child Kanda. <laughs> well, that's fair. He doesn't well, have this stuff. Uh -uh. Name drop! Are you able to talk... Like, give a little tease on, like, will we see some new characters? I know you revealed a character's art creation in the community yes. server. Um... Are, can you tease anything more when it comes to what new things we might find in season two? A little, little tease. Y'all can't see my hands, but I'm doing a little like salt, like salt bay. Uh, There's some wiggly new things characters, on this podcast. New, new people joining the robot team. Uh, <gasps> we're going to see some new robots. Not a robot. 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 Not a, robot. Uh, a lot of people don't know that's a reference to The Good Place, but it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I remember being on stream. I think it was during the 12-hour stream. I was like, Owen, oh, have you ever seen The Good Place? This line keeps reminding me. It's such a great show. And you're like, yeah, Bryce, it's a reference. It's a reference <laughs> to, for those of you, it's a reference to The Good Place. Um, 
What else can I tease for season two? Oh, here's something I can say for season two. So like I was saying before, season one created middle of the pandemic. So we wanted it to be short, controllable, but we still want to tell our story. Season two, there's going to be an event that happens in season two. And then we're going to be able to like sit, like there's going to be a lot more shenanigan based episodes, maybe more episodes based on the crew and their interactions versus us always trying to truck the story along. The story is definitely still there, and I'm very excited for the story we're there to tell. But there's also some episodes that we're just going to be like, this is a comedic episode, and it's going to be about <laughs> character interaction and dynamic and skits and gags and hoo has and yeah. And who has? I'm pretty sure that's a euphemism for vagina, so I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. it is. Um, can you give us, like, let's, let's play a game. Oh, wait. Um, let's play a game. So can you give us, like, one word for each of our characters and, like, how season two, like, what season two means to them? Sure. Broken. All of them? Everyone's <laughs> <laughs> broken. Oh, Sound no. of silence begins to play in the background. Oh, no. <laughs> no, no. I, 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 my goal is if I can cause someone trauma from my writing, that's that's the dream. You already did that to Peyton. You've done <laughs> it. <laughs> Our fans don't deserve that, Owen. No. Uh, one word for everyone in the season that isn't broken or drama. I mean, uh, for like each West, character. Yeah. Anger. Rawr. Okay. Lee. <laughs> fight. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Martin. Laser. Ooh. Ooh. Dr. Daisy Danger Duopolis. <laughs> That's a me. Uh, quirky. <laughs> Wow. Um, <laughs> Benson rocks. Oh, wait, no. Benson. Benson's word is tiny. And you will understand. <laughs> I'm not going to say anything more, but Peyton knows what I'm talking about. There, uh, we have an idea for, like, a Benson gag that's then going to come back later and be important. It's oh, so yeah. funny. It's, <laughs> like, I haven't even written it yet, and it's less a dialogue-based job joke than more of like a visual gag mm. it's so funny it's i i i i'm writing season two purely for that uh <laughs> clover uh just chilling yep uh corinth character development <laughs> how about that <laughs> how about corinth gets Honestly, to I'm be a character for this season I'm down there. For it. and uh carl <gasps> This is a spoiler-free podcast. You can bleep that out, Natalie. <laughs> <laughs> Carl Rocket Launcher. Carl Rocket Launcher. Carl Rocket Launcher. Here's the thing, though. I feel like if people are listening to this podcast, why would they have not watched Stranded? Maybe they found it and they're just like, wow. Sh- Go watch Stranded. What if they think it's about, like, you know, like a survivalist podcast? We tell them how to survive in the woods. Like, okay, oh. okay. Here's how, here's how yeah. you survive the moon. Uh, number one. Don't be there. Ha, 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 do Don't do go. not even go. Don't go. Moon <laughs> sucks. Don't be there. Number two, if you attempt to visit the moon, please bring Dr. Daisy Danger Duopolis with you. Let as well as cream, we have not yeah. had the mushroom yeah. soup yet. Me, me. Mu- mushroom episode in uh, episode in Dude, I'm two? saying if, uh, if mushroom mixtape drop, uh, peep my sound class. <laughs> Bro, if we ever meet in person, I, one of the videos has to be us like making like a mushroom cream soup. Mushroom, oh, absolutely. Mushroom, mushroom. For, it'll Don't be worry. content, Owen, for you too. Don't worry about it. Do we have any more, any specific things we wanted to touch on for, because we're nearing no, the uh, end. We're season near two the is end. happening. I'm really excited for it. Uh, the writing process for season two has changed, though. Before, because we're learning as we go. We're very small. We're very, we're, try, we're trying our best here, guys. We're so small. Uh, but one of the biggest things uh, I think we learned from season one is ask Peyton what we can film before we film <laughs> it so he doesn't have to do something like animate a door. <laughs> Was that, did you actually have to do that? Oh, yeah, so... Yeah, watch, yeah, watch the, the post-mortem. First episode. Yeah, so we, oh. we went over it in the post-mortem, but yeah, Owen wrote in, like, a door closes, and where we film, right. there's no door there. Tell me. So Owen was like, all right, we're going to have to animate a door. I was like, I don't know how to do that. <laughs> That's not how that... 
That, okay, first of all, Peyton, you're making it sound like you were like the most calm oh, no, I was, and I was freaking headed out. person. <laughs> that. This is Peyton. I said, hey, Peyton, could you do, like, and I was calm. I was like, hey, Peyton, could you make like a door close or something? And he's like, I'm not an animator. <laughs> yeah, well, because like, in my, like, in my head, I was like, the, what I had to do in my head was way more complicated than what I actually had to do. I was like, animate a mm. door? Are you kidding me? It usually me? is. What? And then I was like, oh, wait. So then I said, because again, I'm actually calm and composed. That's that. That's true. Um, <laughs> we not have at least said nothing. We but uh, and I, I saw Bryce's face. <laughs> but uh, I was like, okay, I'll just rewrite the scene. I'll straight up rewrite the scene. And uh, it'll be fine. And in the middle of me doing that, Peyton just texted me. He's like, here's your fucking door. <laughs> <laughs> Take it and go. Oh, that's yeah. funny. So now what I do instead is if I'm writing something that I think might be difficult to film, Peyton and I will hop into Destiny and test and make sure that thing can be done before <laughs> it proceeds. Uh is that a tease for season two? Maybe. We've Ooh. tested out some cool animation stuff. Ooh. We're, we're, pu- we're pushing the Destiny mechanics in ways that I think are exciting and new. Peyton, I think we should maybe talk about this because I think we've talked about the negatives about filming in Destiny a lot. Well, do you want to talk about the positives? Because there's actually quite uh. a lot. Like, well, Destin- in terms of... Destiny is filled with game mechanics and scenery that just work so well. Like, I don't know if you have anything you want to add to that, Peyton, but in terms of dynamic stuff we can do, there's a lot that we haven't explored, and it will definitely be explored in Season 2. Even, like, even by Episode 9, like, uh, for those of you who don't play Destiny, uh, a new mechanic was introduced called Stasis, which let you like it lets you make like geometry in the game that you can like interact with. So we were able to get like elevated shots and like stuff that we straight up couldn't do before. So uh, some of that combat, yeah, that combat footage was dope. Mm-hmm. Was. If we're talk, not again, not to like tread water that we've already been over, but uh, I don't need, I don't think that was an expression. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I just made that up. But uh, for in episode eight, which again, the postmortem, a lot of the stuff we talk about in the postmortem. But uh, we started experimenting with what we could do with supers in Destiny, which are basically like the ultimate moves. Uh, more of that to come in season two, but in different and creative ways. Like, That's exciting. Uh, we That's very so. Exciting. Yeah, I think that's everything we want to talk about. Uh, yeah. yeah, again, this is all. All of this was. Stranded exists because of the pandemic. I think that is a safe thing to say, and the pandemic has hit the entertainment industry in ways that we could have never imagined back in March. But. I'm grateful for what we were able to do during it. Not grateful for the pandemic, but grateful for. I'm not grateful for the pandemic, but I'm, no. <laughs> but I'm grateful for what we were able to accomplish during it. Uh, this web series uh, and this cast of people uh, definitely changed my life. It, I think I could safely say that. Uh, and so I'm incredibly excited to move forward in the path that this has started me on. Grateful to all the healthcare workers and essential workers who have been keeping us safe and healthy during this time. And yes. Yes. doing our best to also keep everyone else safe. Wear a mask. Socially distance. Do the dang guidelines. Wear I don't know what the mask. Canadian CDC is. They but if you're, here's the thing. If you're listening to our content and you're like an anti-masker, <laughs> I have no problem with saying leave. I kindly, kindly leave. put on a mask. Or I'll break your kneecaps with a tire iron. Yep. Uh, all right. So we are wrapping up now. Uh, every I think I've said my final statements. Anyone else want to say something? Thank you, everyone, so much for watching Stranded. Thank you for listening to this podcast if you've gotten to this point. And thank you for all the support. Um, I, I'm assuming that you can, fi- you can find 
how do people watch find stranded goodbye more, yeah Bryce, that <laughs> took way too long I, I meant wrap it up i meant wrap it up are found. no i was gonna say like social medias <laughs> watch stranded <laughs> <laughs> are, are we are we stopping Peyton, you want to say bye uh yeah thank you so much for watching our content uh every time i see a piece of fan art or something it never fails to make me smile um but uh, yeah, we do this because of you guys. So uh, we hope we can make content that makes you happy in the future. Natalie is signaling us to end this <laughs> goddamn producing. podcast. Wrap it up. <laughs> Thank you everyone for listening. Bye we bye love everyone. you. Stay love, safe love, love. and stay tuned. Bye bye.